let's start today's lecture, which is uh, of mechanics of parallel fiber bundles. You know that uh, fiber bundles are very important uh, type of textile structures. Uh, bundles are the basis of all uh, linear textiles, but also for uh, different other types. We will speak today about the ideal bundle, bundle with parallel fibers. Uh, to solve some model in this direction is uh, either easy or very difficult. We plan uh, to show you one model which is relatively very easy and is known as a hamburger's model. And then we will introduce also some probabilistic model which is a little uh, more complicated. So, let's start our first idea how to model uh, fiber bundle mechanics. Let's use a general, a general assumptions which are they. We assume that our bundle uh, is created from great number of fibers. Each fiber is straight, is linear. Each fiber is gripped by both jaws. Fibers are mutually parallel, so parallel fiber bundle. Fibers are mechanically independent to each other. It means something like friction among fibers is not used in our model or our. This is model of Mr. Hamburger. Terminologic, terminologically, we will speak about the strength of fiber. And the term strength of fiber, we understand the maximum tensile force in a fiber. And then breaking strain of fiber, which is strain by fiber strength point. Okay? Uh, in this case, we will speak about three variants. But at, uh, at first, some terms, some symbols. Let's imagine one easiest bundle having only one fiber. So that one fiber uh, between two jaws of breaking machine. The gauge length we call H and strain, so relative elongation, we call epsilon. Uh, then uh, we will speak about number of fibers in bundle. In this case, which is here, number of fibers, red fiber is one. Then uh, tensile force, tensile force is S. We will speak about uh, force strain relation of fiber. So the force S is a function of epsilon, isn't it? Some function. Uh, next term is strength. What is it? Strength. Strength it is the maximum value of force S, isn't it? Yeah? And uh, 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 finally, we will speak about a breaking strain. And breaking strain called A, it is a special value of epsilon of uh, strain of fiber in the point in which the force is equal to strength P. Yes? So that P is the function S in the point A. This is case with one fiber. The second is uh, fiber assembly having more fibers. So then the number of fibers is in fiber bundle schematically here. A lot of red fibers is here. Number of fibers is n. We call it n. Uh, tensile force is S sigma, capital sigma, as mnemotechnic symbol, subscript for summation all forces together. 
So force is S sigma. This force is function of epsilon in the bundle, of course. Therefore, S sigma must be S sigma epsilon, some function. A strength of bundle, maximum force of bundle is P sigma, is P sigma, which is maximum of S sigma. And breaking strain is called A sigma, breaking strain of bundle, of course. Uh, A sigma, uh, so that it P sigma is equal to the function S sigma in the point A sigma. It is evident. We will speak about three cases in this theme. Case one is trivial, case two is very easy, and case three is not too easy for you. <laughs> uh, case one, the trivial case. Let's assume that all fibers have same force strain curve. and B, same strength and same breaking strain A. Each fiber is same as each other fiber. All fibers are same. How is th then? It is evident, it's really a trivial case. It's evident that the force in fiber bundle, what is the force in fiber bundle? No, it's uh, force per one fiber times number of fibers, so that n times s epsilon. Uh, strength, what is the strength? How, how is the, uh, the, the loading of, of such bundle? It's longer, 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 in one moment, pink, and all fibers are destroyed, in one moment. So that the strength is evidently, strength of bundle is evidently n times strength of fiber. And so, of course, uh, 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 strain, the, the, the breaking strain, the breaking strain of bundle is same than the breaking strain of each fiber. It is the easiest case, trivial case. Second case is solved uh, in uh, 1949 year by a uh, hamburger, and it's known as Hamburger's linear theory. Let's imagine a bundle from two types of fibers. Uh, here on our scheme, the fibers are uh, red and green. Yeah? Bundle from two types of fibers. Uh, all fibers of one type have same force strain curve, same strength P and say breaking strain A. Let's imagine, for example, in reality, uh, the bundle from viscose fibers and polyester fibers. All viscose fibers, you, uh, you, you mean that uh, all viscose fibers have the same properties, although all polyester fibers have the same properties, but uh, between viscose fiber and polyester fiber are uh, very high different uh, properties, are very fine, very, very. Uh, significant differences. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, formulate one convention now. Fiber of one type having smaller value of breaking strain is denoted as a number one. In the blend viscose polyester fiber. Evidently, viscose fiber uh, have smaller value of breaking strain, isn't it? Yeah. Therefore, uh, viscose fiber will be fiber number one. In our schemes, uh, let's imagine that they are uh, uh, red fibers. The second fibers, green fibers, will have a number two. We will use subscripts one and two for first and second type of fibrous material. Symbols. Fiber finance is T1 or T2. There are symbols for material number one. There are symbols for material number two. So T1 and T2. For strain relation is 
a pair one fiber is S1 epsilon and or S2 epsilon for material number two. A breaking strain is A1 and A2 and based on our convention A, uh, A1 is smaller than A2. Yeah? Then fiber strand, fiber strand is P1 or P2. Number of fibers in our bundle. Yeah? Number of fibers in our bundle is N1 and N2. Total number of fibers in bundle is N, which is N1 plus N2. Mass of fibers in our bundle. All is related to our bundle among uh, the couple of jaws. Uh, mass of fibers is M1 and M2. Total mass is M, sum of both. A bundle finaliz, bundle count, is capital T, which is total mass of our bundle by length of our bundle. Length of our bundle is H, gauge length. Uh, bundle finaliz, uh, yeah, this is bundle finaliz. Uh, mass portion, uh, we spoke in the first le lessons about the mass portions. Mass portion of first material is M1, mass of first fibers by total mass and similarly G2 is M2 by M. Uh, let's remember that G1 plus G2 must be equal 1. You know in the industry uh, we use percentage values so that we uh, in our theoretical work uh, G1, G2 can be 0 0.4, 0 0.6, something between 0 and 1. In praxis it is sometimes 40 percentage, then 60 percentage, yeah? So we, in theoretical work, we, we speak about a dimensionless quantity uh, from interval 0 to 1 with G1 and G2. Well, how it is, how it is with number of fibers in our fiber bundle? We know that M1, mass of fibers, from first material is G1 times M. It's going out from definition of G from mass portion, isn't it? Uh, then, but also it is valid T1, finenis, is mass by length. How is the length of fibers in our bundle? Number of fibers times length of each one. N times H and H, yeah? n times h. From the second equation we obtain n1 is m1 by t1 h, but m1 from here, from this equation, m1 is g1 times m, g1 times m. But the ratio m by h, it was the finaliz, the linear density of our bundle capital T. Uh, then we can write N1 is G1 times capital T by T1. Yeah? And evidently, similarly, we can derive N2. N2 is G2 times T by T2. These equations we will use for number of fibers from first and second material in our blended uh, bundle. Now uh, let's, uh, let's think about our scheme, which uh, this one here. On the abscissa, this is the scale of epsilon strain, fiber strain, and or on the ordinate are forces. Uh, schematically, uh, let's imagine that the red curve is for strain relation of fiber number one from first material, red curve. The green curve is similar, similarly uh, the uh, for strain relation of one fiber number two from second material. The first curve is increasing from zero to some end point which represents the, the break of fiber uh, this endpoint have two coordinates, epsilon is equal A1, breaking strain of red fiber, 
and the force is P1, so that is the strength of our red fiber, fiber number one. Similarly, green fiber uh, is increased, some, have some half F and another, uh, another force uh, strain uh, relation. End point have the coordinates A2, breaking strain of green fiber, and P2, strand of green fiber. Yeah? On this, uh, it's, uh, this scheme is well because A, A1 is smaller than A2. Our convention is valid. Okay. Uh, on the red, uh, sorry, on the green uh, function, we have one, uh, one white point, this here, uh, which will be important. What is it? Uh, which of point is it? The green fiber in this moment is have the strain epsilon equal A1 as a breaking strain of red fiber. But for a green fiber it is not breaking strain, it's only some general strain. Uh, and in this moment the green fiber have some force S2, because S2 is whole this green function, in the point epsilon equal A1, S2 A1. Yeah? Let's now divide this scheme to three parts. Uh, first part is the part from 0 to epsilon equal A1, breaking strain of red fiber. It's a little rose colored area in my picture. The second uh, interval is from A1 to A2. It's green colored. And the third is over A2, it's white. And we will study separately the forces in these three intervals. In the first interval from 0 to A1. How is the uh, in which point from this interval is the force, the total force in bundle, the maximal, maximum, maximum force? In which point? You see each fiber with epsilon uh, take higher and higher force, red as well as green. So the highest force must be in the point epsilon equal A1, isn't it? Is it logically clear? Yeah, well, uh, so that which of, uh, which of force in bundle is when epsilon is equal A1? It is shown here. It is force S sigma in the point epsilon equal A1. So S sigma A1, isn't it? What is it, logically? How many fibers, red fibers, <laughs> are in our bundle? N1. Each fiber, each fiber take the force, which is its strength force, P1. So N times P1. It is the part from red fibers in bundle. And how, how, uh, which of force uh, taking the, fi the green fibers? Each fiber have uh, or take the force S two A one. Is it so? Yeah. So uh, total force is n times P one plus n two times S two A one. Yo, from this. After uh, using of this couple of equations here, we obtain this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, ex this expression. So we know that in interval from 0 to A1, the highest force in bundle, which is in moment when epsilon is equal A1, is given by this formula, by this equation. Now let's solve the second interval from A1 to A2. How it is here? If epsilon is higher than A1, evidently all red fibers are broken. Only green fibers are working. 
Nevertheless, with increasing of epsilon, the force in each green fiber is increasing too, and the maximum of force in each green fiber is in the point epsilon equal a2. Clear. Well, so uh, how is the total force in this, uh, in this moment, epsilon equal a2, in our bundle? How it is? Uh, the force in our bundle is, uh, uh, is uh, number of red fibers times 4, 0. All are broken. Plus number of green fibers times uh, the maximum possible force, it is strand of fiber. So we can write n1 times 0 plus n2 times p2. I, and using, uh, using n2 from this equation, we obtain S sigma a2 is t times g2 p, uh, p2 by p2. And for completeness, if epsilon is higher than a2, all fibers are broken, and so that it's evident that the then the force in the bundle is equal zero. Here. Yeah? Now, let's solve the problem. What is it? The, the 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 strength of bundle. What is the strength of bundle? We said that strength is the maximum force. It must be one of our earlier two forces. It can be or this one or this one. Maybe this, maybe this. In the moment, nobody knows. So that we must to write that strength of bundle is maximum from two values, S sum A1 and S sum A2, which was derived. Using expressions derived, we can write that the uh, strength of bundle is uh, T, because T we can give before brackets and before the operator of maximum. Uh, T times maximum of these two expressions. Well, what we, what we have here? It's interesting. Uh, here is a ratio P1 by T1. What is P1? Strength of fiber by fiber linear density, by fiber fineness. It's tenacity. It's known as a tenacity of fiber. For example, Newton Patex or something so. Similarly, what is it? A P2 by T2. This is a tenacity of fiber number two, green fiber. And when we uh, give the t on the left hand side of our equation, we obtain the ratio p sigma by t. And what is this? That's evidently tenacity of our bundle. Uh, so that we can write our equation in such form. And we can say that the uh, bundle tenacity is given by such expression is maximum of these two. Two, two, two values in which we have um, breaking uh, uh, tenacity of first fiber, tenacity of second fiber, and also ratio S to A1 by T2 force in our earlier white point on the green curve uh, by uh, linear density, by fineness, and it is called as a specific stress. You know from earlier lecture that uh, our, uh, our quantities, force per uh, linear density, is equal to, uh, to uh, stress by rho, by, by specific mass, and it is called uh, generally in the theory of mechanics as a specific stress. So our tenacity is also something, is also specific stress, but in an end point of uh, for strain curve. Yes. Uh, now let's solve the breaking strain, the breaking strain of bundle. Uh, 
Ja, uh, not uh, break, yeah, a breaking strain of bundle. If the first member here is higher than the second, then from context, from logical context, is evident that the breaking strain of bundle will be, sa will be same as the breaking uh, strain of red fiber. That, that it's A1. And similarly, if the second a member is, uh, is um, higher than first, then it will be A2. Now let's solve the uh, graphically interpretation of our equation. Our equation is uh, 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 rewrite it here. It is the same as this one. Well, uh, and we want to, to, to uh, create some graphical interpretation of this equation. Uh, G1 and G2 are the mass portions of first and second material. Uh, let's uh, give on the abscissa the quantity G2 from left to right from 0 to 1. Zero percentage of fibers number two green fibers, therefore green arrow, <laughs> to uh, one, one hundred percentage. Yeah? G1 must go from right hand side to left, also from zero to one, isn't it? I don't know if G2 is 70 percentage, 0 0.7, for example, here, then G2 must be. 30 percentage, 0 0.3. The abscissa is clear. On the ordinate, we will uh, have uh, tenacities. Let's study now this, this uh, expression. The first member here have two members. Uh, especially the first, uh, let's study the first of this. G1 time, G1 times P1 by T1. P1 by T1, it's tenacity of fiber number one. It's a given value, P1 by T1. And this value is multiplied by G1. So that if G1 is equal to zero, that this member is equal to zero. If G1 is maximum, is equal to one that the, this member is equal P1 by T1, tenacity. And it's linear relation, so that uh, uh, this member linearly increase with G1 from 0 to 1. This line, this straight line, as, uh, which represents this member, is this here. It starts from zero and with G1 increasing from zero to one is increasing to the value P1 by T1. Clear? Similarly, the second member. The second member is here. If G2 is equal to zero, then it is zero. If G2 is, uh, is one, then it is S2 A1 by T2 and it's linear function so that the picture of this, this part of this member is in, this member is increasing with G2 from 0 to S2 A1 by T2. It's increasing from this point to, to this here, yeah? to the value S2 A1 by T2. Yes, but our first member, our first member is sum of both. What sum of these two lines? Evidently, this thick black line. Okay. So is the uh, the picture of our first member here in relation to G1, G2 proportions. How it is with uh, with the second member? Second member is G2 times P2 by T2. P2 by T2 is tenacity of second fiber. Given value. Given value for this or that 
fiber which we used on the plates of our green fibers. And this member, the value of this member is increasing with G2 from 0 to P2 by T2. Well, so uh, we can, uh, we can um, have the, 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 the right or, or paint the, the line from 0, G, G2 equals 0, with G2 increased it to P2 by T2. Wow. And now what is it? What is it? The bundle tenacity P sigma by capital T. It's maximum of this. These two black thick lines on our picture. When we are in this region, what is higher? This thick line or this thick line? Higher, higher, higher value is evidently on this thick line. Yes? So in this region, this line is uh, a tenacity of, uh, represent the tenacity of bundle to, uh, to the, this uh, yellow point here. But how it is on the right, uh, uh, on the right hand side, in this region, which of this couple of the thick black line have a higher position? Evidently this here. So that from this yellow point to the right end, this line is, represents the tenacity of bundle, isn't it? All together. The tenacity of bundle it is given by such blue curve, say, which is uh, a, braked, uh, a braked shape, isn't it? It's interesting. Why? C. We start, uh, let's imagine that the, we have, we start with 100 percentage of fibers number one. Then the tenacity is P1 by T1. Then on the place of red fibers, we give some portion of green fibers. On the place of, I don't know, viscose fibers, we give uh, some fibers from polyester. Polyesters have higher value of, uh, of a strand. And what do you, for example, we use this, this, uh, this um, G1 and G2. And what do we obtain? We obtain a value which is smaller than earlier starting bundle, isn't it? It is not right when somebody is meaning that when on the place of one fiber he uh, will use some fibers which uh, have higher strength that the bundle, the, make, the blend together, will increase in, in strength. You can see that it can be also a situation in which it is decreased. The, ten, the, the tenacity is smaller. So this is, this is a risk when we create in spinning mill, for example, the blends. Because when we, uh, uh, when we choose no good, uh, no good portions, mass portions of material, our final yarn, yarn is not ideal fiber bundle, but similarly, uh, can have smaller tenacity than earlier without blending. This uh, blue curve, braked curve, is typical for blending, but not every time must it be. It is possible also to obtain such picture. In this case, really, the red point is the minimum point. How is, let's us study now how is the minimum bundle tenacity. It is the point in which is the risico with mechanical properties, the, the high gist, isn't it? Uh, where it can, uh, what is minimum of bundle tenacity? Minimum of bundle tenacity can be or if this structure is actual or in our red point, 
if the result is this one, or in our yellow point, usually in our yellow point. So let's calculate uh, the, uh, this, uh, in these points the, 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 uh, the quantities which are valid there. In the red point it is very easy. In the red point every time it is P1 by T1, tenacity of fast fibrous material. In yellow point, what is the, this yellow point? It is it is section of two lines. Yeah? One line, equation of one line is given by this expression. Uh, uh, equation uh, for the second is given by this expression. In yellow point, our yellow point here, both must be valid because it, it is a section of two lines. So that um, it is valid that the first member G1, P1 by T1 plus G2, S2A1 by T1 must be equal to G2, P2 by T2. Yeah? Well, after rearranging of this using G1 is 1 minus G2 because G1 plus G2 equal 1. And after rearranging, we obtain the mass portion for second material, our green material in our lecture, uh, as shown in uh, our equation here. It's trivial rearranging. So that we know G2 in this position. Okay, G1 is 1 minus G2, evidently. And uh, using uh, this value, we can calculate the tenacity, the minimum tenacity uh, of bundle for, for which? For this line, but also from this line, because yellow point is section of both. I recommend you use this line because mechanically it is easier, you need not so long way by numerical calculation. Therefore, this tenacity is G1 times P1 by T2. Okay? It's a minimum, it's a minimum tenacity. Uh, no, precisely. Minimum tenacity is uh, a minimum from two values or this one from red points, or this one from our yellow points. Smaller from these two is total minimum of tenacity of fiber bundle. I said after addition, addition of fibers having higher tenacity, the tenacity of, of resu resulting bundle can decrease. Uh, yes, uh, this theory can be applied for a rough estimation of blended staple yarns too. Of course, staple yarn is not ideal parallel fiber bundle. But uh, the preferential direction in yarn is longitudinal, yeah, so that it is a little similar to our ideal bundle. Therefore, our uh, result can be roughly used also for evaluation of ten yarn tenacity, tenacity of blended yarn. Uh, how it is uh, applied? On the place of P1 by T1, Early, to this moment it was tenacity of fiber number one. We use, we use uh, uh, the tenacity of single yarn, of single yarn from 100 percentage of material, uh, sorry, uh, 100 percentage of material number one. On the place P2 by T2, now we use the mean tenacity of single yarn from second only from second material. And uh, on the place of the value S2A1 by T2, our earlier uh, white point, uh, which means a specific stress, 
of the single yarn now from 100 percentage of material number two. When the strain is equal to the breaking strain of the single yarn uh, from 100 percentage of material number one, it is epsilon is A1, or for example in an, a Newton pair, Newton pair text. So similarly, only on the position of earlier tenacities and breaking elongations of fibers, we uh, use uh, ad uh, analogical uh, quantities from the yarns. We made on my university some experiments with blended yarns. Of course, uh, we didn't <coughs> obtain so idealized break graph. But really, uh, the, the such curve, experimentally measured, uh, have such trend. Usually, it is so that our curve is going so, that so, and maybe so. So, yeah, some S curve. But it has minimum, and it has minimum roughly uh, near to our yellow point. This expression is often used, and uh, for, our, for our work in industry, this hamburger story brings one important, one important result, beside possibility to calculate it numerically. It's shown that when we prepare some blend, the, the tenacity of such blend, maybe on tenacity of such blend, uh, can but needn't be higher than earlier tenacity of uh, 100 percentage from, uh, of yarn from one component. When you will prepare some blend, in your brain must start some red light. Be carefully. Maybe that the uh, strength of your yarn will be not uh, enough well for following uh, application. Yeah? This uh, you must to prove it and be check it and, and be sure that your idea of this or that blend is fully useful also from point of view of mechanical properties. Therefore, uh, this, uh, this theoretical concept is very uh, useful for industry. You can calculate when you have the starting values. You can calculate it and say it uh, quantitatively. But in your brain, when you will be some uh, technologist in industry, must start by blending uh, some, I said, uh, red light in your brain. <laughs> be careful with strength, with, uh, strength uh, means tenacity of maybe yarn. Yeah? Well, it is about the, it is about the Hamburger story. The city literature is original work of, of Hamburger, 1949. Uh, the third, uh, the case three, which we in short uh, want to start now and in our other lecture we will continue with this. Uh, it's no so easy, that's very trivial, in, but uh, useful Hamburger's theoretical model. Uh, some intuitive introduction to case three. We spoke in Hamburger's model about two components. It was red and green fibers. Yeah? Only blend from two components. Similarly, it's possible to derive a corresponding equation for three components. Similar logical way. For five components, for ten components, for thousand components, for a million components, theoretically. Isn't it? Now, uh, let's imagine, I don't know, cotton fiber, uh, material, cotton fibers, cotton material. Each fiber, from its natural fiber, each fiber 
have another value of uh, tenacity and other value of breaking strain, isn't it? Let's uh, make from this fibers, theoretically, no practically, it's too difficult. Let's make, uh, separate the fibers, to, uh, the, the groups, the fibers having same uh, tenacity and same, same breaking strain. You will have maybe thousand different, different groups and then make blend. It is our original uh, material. So uh, the material having variable uh, tenacity and variable uh, breaking strains of fibers is something like hamburger's case but with no two then thousands <laughs> very much components. Intuitively, is it, is it intuitively clear, this idea? So that similar effect as by hamburger must be also in the case when we use fibers having the distribution of tenacity and distribution of breaking strain. Uh, the breaking points of fibers are random usually. Breaking points, I mean this couple's uh, uh, force breaking strain in this case. In this graph on the abscissa is uh, bra uh, breaking uh, strains of fibers. On the ordinate is force, is stre uh, strength, strength of fiber. And each fiber has another endpoint by break, so that all together we obtain a such set of red points as the symbolic the set of all of all couples a strand uh, breaking strain. Uh, symbols which we will use, P is fiber strand, A is fiber breaking strain. Let's imagine that P is from some interval from P min to P max and A is from some interval from A min to A max. Yeah? Because write it uh, no, uh, in short uh, form, this, uh, this um, domain we will call under the symbol omega. Omega it means P from interval P min to P max, A from interval A min to A max. And uh, this, uh, the distribution, the distribution of all uh, such points here, of all points uh, strength breaking elongation of fibers have some uh, some a joint probability density function of these couples. This probability density function, joint probability density function, we call uh, UPA. It's probability density function U of two parameters, two, uh, two random variables. First random variable is P, fiber strand. Second random variable is A, fiber breaking strain. Well, I think this introduction to our third case in this lecture is finished. In uh, following lecture, we will continue with derivation of uh, with solving of this problem. Well, thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.